Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Capital Concepts. I'm Jeff Schuler, Director of Research at Spiker Consulting down in Deerfield Beach, Florida. I'd like to use this opportunity to announce we've got new offices in Wall Street in Manhattan, as well as the Financial District in Miami, soon to open up in Boston. So we're growing, growing nicely. If you'd like to get a hold of us, just go by the information down here and uh, we'll get to it. I want to just get right to it in this uh, segment because it's been a little bit while coming out. I want to check a couple things, but there is a situation going on right now which is going to be disastrous for many individuals. If you hold and you own GLD, the ETF, the exchange traded fund that is supposedly backed by gold, do not miss this. If you know somebody that owns the exchange traded funds, make sure they watch this. This can be the most important eight to ten minutes of your or their financial lives. Now, about four to six weeks ago, there was an irregularity picked up in China. There was about uh, 5,600 to 5,700 400 ounce gold bars that were found to be gutted and filled with tungsten. As a matter of fact, it was no more than gold-plated tungsten bricks, about 60 metric tons. And a lot of people shuffed it off as being a, you know, what you, it's the Chinese, or uh, just a, a, an occurrence that happens every once in a while, and it was an isolated incident. Let's look at it, but not really take it to, uh, you know, think there's something big going on. But the Chinese were not going to stand still for this, and they did an investigation. And what they found out, or apparently what they found out, is about 15 years ago, in the Clinton administration with guys like Rob Rubin, Al Greenspan, Larry Summers, about 1.3 to 1.5 million 400 ounce tungsten blanks were created by a major U.S. refinery and smelter. And interestingly enough, and they apparently said they got the paper trail that 640,000 of these tungsten blanks were sent to Fort Knox where apparently, the, apparently they're still there today and the remainder of the 1.3 to 1.5 million uh, bricks that were made were sold on the international market. That is very disturbing. Gold plated tungsten, white tungsten, where very quickly put, tungsten is about $10 a pound and it has exactly the same weight and density as gold. So in order to check the bars, you've got to go through different you know, type of spectrograms. It's a lot more intrusive where you've got to drill into them. A lot of different ways, different things you've got to do uh, become more cumbersome. What does it have to do with GLD? Interesting. Go back to February 2nd, 2004. Stuart Smith, who was a senior vice president of operations at the NYMEX, was put under investigation by the district attorney of New York. As a matter of fact, he was served a warrant his office was raided, all the forms were taken in. Now, he's the guy, and that's the office that was in charge of overseeing every single transaction in gold, silver, platinum, palladium, with gold, done on the NYMEX. All the serial numbers, all, all the records were kept by them. Interestingly enough, nothing has come out of that. No follow-up, no more media. As a matter of fact, no one's heard from Stuart Smith since then. He's where? Nothing. About this. Then, just a couple weeks later, the Rothschild Group, one of the world's largest investment groups, pulled out of doing business in commodities, especially gold. Now, there is a contention that they pulled out because they felt, quote, Something is amiss. They know a big gold scandal is coming and they want no part of it. On the 18th, it was said Rothschild wants out before the proverbial S hits the fan. That's from Bill Murphy at Le Metropole. Coincidence or not, seven months later, just a few short time period months later, GLD began to trade. Now it takes six months to get something packaged, gone through attorneys, get through the SEC, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to launch something. You do the time frame. Where's the gold held that's supposed to back up this ETF one for one? <laughs> you got it. Fort Knox. Now, 
Add to that, recently, the gold bar list of what's supposed to be backing up this ETF went from 1,381 pages to 200 pages back to 800 pages with no explanation given. Now I've mentioned on my radio show as well as in different capital concepts venues and in publications that the ETFs are under investigation. The silver ETF is under investigation, the gold ETF is under investigation, the oil ETF is under investigation for trading practices, for not having the metals or the commodities to back up what they say they've got. Now it's my contention, absolutely no way in the world, I've said this, there's not enough gold and not enough silver available since 2004 for them to be able to back off what they say they've got. That they couldn't do it. I figured they're using derivatives. That they would be using fake gold to back it up, number one, that's going to crush the price of the ETF. Crush it. Obviously investigations and all the people that thought they own gold, they're going to rush in to buy real gold. It's going to be very interesting, but I expect it to push the price up. But here's the important thing for those people that own GLD. I'm going to read right from this. This is an excerpt. Page 11. Go to it if you own it. Gold bars allocated to the trust in connection with the creation of a basket may not meet the London Good Delivery Standards and if a basket is issued against such gold, the trust may suffer a loss. <laughs> a big one. Neither the trustee nor the custodian independently confirms the fineness of the gold bars allocated to the trust in connection with the creation of a basket. The basket is the gold put aside to match the fund. The gold bars allocated to the trust by the custodian may be different from the reported fineness or weight required by the LBMA standards for gold bars delivered in the settlement of a gold trade or the London Good Delivery Standards, the standards required by the trust. So the trust requires full 100% quality in its standards, but it takes no responsibility if it doesn't meet it. You just take the loss. If the trustee nevertheless issues a basket against such gold, and if the custodian fails to satisfy the ob its obligation to the credit, the trust, the amount of any deficiency, the trust may suffer a loss. That's you, ladies and gentlemen. That's you, ladies and gentlemen. That's you, ladies and gentlemen, will suffer a loss. If you own GLD, caveat emptor, read the prospectus. Look at what you have. Think about this. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot verify 100% that everything in this report is 100% accurate. But if it's even partially accurate, and it makes, honestly, it makes sense to me, you're in trouble with your GLD. It's a tough lesson. I'm not telling you whether buy or sell or whatnot. I've made my recommendations clear. But I'll say this. If you are an investor, stop trying to play it cute. If you're going to invest in gold, invest in gold. Buy the rounds, buy the ingots, buy the bars, buy the bullion. Buy the physical metal. If you want to leverage it, if that's good for you, do it. If it's not good for you, don't do it. But go into the physical metal itself. Don't play games. Paper representations of investments, you're always asking for trouble. They are items built by Wall Street for their benefit, not for your benefit. It's a way for stockbrokers, and I've got nothing against them or for them selling this, but they should have looked into it. And you should have looked into it because you're the actual investor. There are ways for them to make money off a popular and important situation. That's what they do. If they can't do it themselves, they're going to find a way to make money off it. That's what it's all about. It's definitely not in your best interest. Never has been, never will be. And you've got to do what's right for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you take this to heart. Look into it yourself. Get the information. Decide what's best for you and take action on it. If you want to get in touch with us, do so. I recommend that. Get the facts and then make an informed decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope at least this has helped. I don't know if you're going to enjoy it, uh, but have an absolutely phenomenal day. And until we next meet in this format, may God bless you all.